Hello, I'm Rijn Kolen. I work at the Humanities Cluster of the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Sciences. And this is work with a large group of people in which we work at making the resolutions of the Dutch States General available for digital historical research. This is part of the Republic project where we publish the resolutions in a computational environment that allows all kinds of digital and computational research. The resolutions of the States General is an archive that captures the decision-making process of the States General of the Dutch Republic in the period 1576 to 1796. So it's a long serial publication of 220 years, which summarizes the daily meetings, and there are about 60,000 meetings in total with over 1 million resolutions in over half a million pages of text. So this is a key resource for research on political history of this period. The archive is a mixture of mostly handwritten material, um, but also for the last 90 years, printed editions of all the resolutions. There's a lot of structure here. What the um, volumes capture is the daily meetings uh, summarized. So here in, in, in a meeting, it starts with a date, um, a list of attendance, uh, and then lists of individual resolutions, which are a proposition uh, made by someone, uh, a discussion of that proposition, and then a decision and a resolution of what was decided uh, on that proposition. There's some marginalia that cover topics of these resolutions, as well as um, topical indexes with page references that were used at the time as well. Now, to provide access to this corpus, we need to think about what kind of questions do researchers have? What is it that they would like to investigate with this corpus? So we look at potential research questions and methods. So we can look at narrative analysis. For instance, do we see changes in how the state's general treated petitions by the general public? And can this be used to analyze the accessibility of the state's general for the general public? or a network analysis in which a researcher wants to know the dividing line between formal and informal politics, who were involved, who were attending the meetings, uh, what committees were there, who knew each other, who worked with each other, how did this network of actors operate. So each question requires different ways of handling the structure of the archive. So, with each question, we can also think about how would this translate into queries a researcher would put to the information system. Um, to take the example of the accessibility of the States General and the petitions that were submitted, a researcher would want to select, for instance, all the resolutions that ha are based on petitions for a particular time period. These could be thousands and thousands of resolutions. From them, the researcher may want to extract lists of persons who submitted these petitions, lists of persons who attended the meetings, um, the topics of those petitions. And with that, they would want to maybe look at the numbers of petitions submitted in each year or decade and how that changed or how, what decisions were reached and how they changed over time. So to allow for this kind of research, there are a lot of information extraction challenges. We start with digital scans of an analog corpus, which are based on pages. But to address these research questions, a researcher would have to access the corpus at the level of the meetings and the resolutions and the attendance. So how do we go from the physical to the logical structure? We also want to extract layers of metadata, for instance, temporal metadata, Given a particular resolution, on what day was this resolution made? Who were the decision makers for that resolution? Who were present? Who chaired? What decision was reached for this resolution? What is the topic? Uh, what type of proposition is it? And who proposed it? All these layers can be then be combined to address complex questions. In addition to the extraction process, there are additional hurdles, like the historic language use. Um, it's different from modern Dutch, so tools that have been trained on modern Dutch don't work well on historical Dutch. And even within this corpus, the language use and the spelling of the language changed over time. 
and there's lots of variations. On top of that, there are recognition errors of the OCR and HDR process, um, which make it even more challenging to do, for instance, simple keyword search, but also to do information extraction. Now, all of these challenges are common to all kinds of digitization projects. In that sense, Republic is no different. We deal with this in a particular way that is really suitable for the Republic project, but we think it is also useful for lots of other projects. So like most other digitization projects, we start with a scan of the individual pages. The text recognition process gives us very complex output in XML. For instance, here, the word that is recognized, as well as all the coordinate information of where that word appears on the page. From that, we could, for instance, create a plain text representation, so you can do full text search. But this contains all kinds of errors, and it's at the level of pages. So if you're looking for resolutions for, for instance, the 8th of January, a full text search with the word January would not allow you to find this page, because the word January is not correctly recognized. So what happens in many projects is that generic tools are used, like machine learning, natural language processing, for instance, named entity recognition. These tools will identify all kinds of names with the type of entity they think it is, which gives you some form of access. Now, there are several big problems with this. One is that with this kind of historical material, the results are often disappointing. So we manually annotated 200 pages of text with all the entities we found and trained a named entity tagger. And we expected these bad results to come out. The process generates for the entire corpus several million named entities, and over half of them are incorrect, are not named entities. Moreover, much worse, is that of the actual named entities in the corpus, only 20% are found. Um, so the results are not very useful. We could improve the results by annotating more pages, but even if we annotate 10 times as many pages, it's doubtful that the results would become much better, because this is just a very challenging task. But not only won't the results get much better, they also don't give us good handles on the structure that is present that researchers want to use. So the individual meetings and the resolutions cannot be found through named entity recognition. So what we want instead is to extract the structure that this is the start of a meeting and that it's the 8th of January 1755, that this is the president and the name of the president, that this is the attendance list with the names of the attendants, that these are the individual resolutions and that at the start of each resolution it gives you the type of proposition that was made and who proposed it and also that for each resolution, there is a decision paragraph. So extracting this kind of structure information requires labeling. We could do it all manually, but that would require far too many resources. But doing it fully automatically also doesn't work. Even if we fed it to a machine learning algorithm, the results would be relatively noisy and we would need a lot of manually annotated data. So our solution is to have a human in the loop process where we can in incorporate what we know about the domain and the corpus. So things that we want to exploit are the fact that in red we know meetings start with a Latin name for a weekday, followed by a date, followed by a year, and that these meetings are chronological, that there are no meetings on Sundays or holidays, that for the attendance list, the name of the president appears between the capitalized words preside and presentibus, but also that the seven states rotate it weekly in providing the president for the meeting, and that in the other weeks that president is a regular attendant, so in the list of regular attendants, or that the propositions that start each resolution are standard formulas. So one of the key characteristics of this corpus is that the language used is extremely repetitive. Um, so for close reading, this is an absolute nightmare because 
it is difficult to keep your attention at the text. It's even difficult to tell the differences between individual resolutions because they look so similar. But from an information extraction point of view, this is like being a kid in a candy store. There's so much information to work with. So what we choose to do here is to exploit this as much as possible. We use corpus-specific phrase models that capture these formulas with which we can find structural elements. For instance, the resolution openings. We have a relatively short list of phrases that are used over and over again as the opening of a resolution. For the decision are also very fixed formulas of how they are presented in the text. On top of the phrase models, we use fuzzy searching, and this is to combat the historical language variation, spelling variation, and also the OCR and HDR errors. So in green, we see two formulas, and in orange, we see strings that come out of the OCR process that are very similar to the green strings. So fuzzy searching is a way to say this string in orange is similar enough given a particular threshold to the green string. And then of course the question is how similar is good enough? And this is something that needs to be established with trial and error. Now there are many fuzzy string matching algorithms around and they have been available for many decades. Um, and what they allow you to do is, given a list of index terms, find all the index terms that are similar to a particular term that you're looking for, for a given threshold of similarity. There are far fewer algorithms that allow you to do fuzzy string searching, in which the problem is you have lots of documents with full text, and you're looking for a particular string that somewhere occurs in there, with some kind of similarity. So for that we developed our own module in Python, it's available online on GitHub, as well as the rest of our project code. And I won't go into details of how the fuzzy searcher works. I hope that becomes clear from the examples I give. A few more words on the phrase models. These really are very simple lists of phrases. And per phrase, we capture a few additional things, like what type of phrase it is and what kind of information it signals, whether there are spelling variants that we also want to capture as part of the same formula, or whether the phrase has to occur at the start of a paragraph or not. So for resolution openings, we have a list of eight different formulas, and for some of the formulas there are one or multiple variants. For resolution decisions, there are far fewer phrases that occur with also fewer variants. And to give you a clearer idea of what kind of results this gives, this is the process of identifying the start of a meeting and identifying the exact date of that meeting. So here you see the results for the month of January for 1725. Our algorithm gives these results. Most of these results are correct, but you will see that some dates are missing. For instance, here, the Friday 5th of January is missing. However, this was only a first pass in which the similarity thresholds were high, meaning strings have, have to be very similar to what we are looking for to be accepted. But now we know that the missing Friday, the 5th of January, has to occur somewhere between page 11 and page 14. So with much less text to search in, there are far fewer chances of errors, and therefore we can lower our thresholds for similarity and identify the place where that meeting starts in a second iteration. For identifying the openings of resolutions, here you see the results for the year 1723, for which we find 950 fuzzy matches for the formula Ontvangen en Missive van. These match with 315 different OCR strings. So this shows two parts of the problem with searching in text with historical language variation and OCR errors. The total number of different OCR strings is huge and even the most frequent one gives only access to about 30% of all matches. We also evaluated each of these steps. So for meeting starts, we took 300 random starts and looked at the results. If it finds a start, is it an actual start? Which in this case gives 100% correct results. It's always a start of a meeting, but it doesn't find all the starts that we identified. 
for identifying the correct date of the start of a meeting. There were only three mistakes out of 300, and it also didn't find uh, a small number of dates. For finding the start of a resolution, we took 198 random resolutions, and our list of phrases and fuzzy search together give high precision, but relatively low recall, and this is because our phrase model is incomplete. So the way we deal with this is to expand our model and then create a new evaluation set so that we don't overfit on the initial evaluation set. Of course, the phrase models are specific to this corpus and can't be reused easily for other corpora. But the general approach we have used in various other projects, for instance, in looking at or extracting information from advertisements in 17th and 18th century newspapers. There we have the same formulaic language use and very fixed, conventionalized order in which the information in advertisements is presented. For instance, auctions start with the name of a broker, then a date, a location of the auction, and what is being auctioned. And here we can use fuzzy search in combination with phrase models again to extract information from hundreds of thousands of advertisements, which gives insight into who were auctioneers and what were they auctioning, how much of each good. Another project was looking at historical place names in medieval charters and using these as attestations that this place name was in use in a particular period. We used books of medieval charters printed in the early 20th century with some OCR errors in the digitization step, but using lists of place names from the indexes of those books, we could link them to the individual charters and then to the years in which they, these charters were found. So we could create 17,000 attestations of historical place names. So to conclude, for giving access to these kinds of large historical corpora, we need to think about the kinds of research questions that we want to make possible or that we want to support. A lot of this requires handling the analog structure that is part of the analog archive. These structures were put there at the time because people at the time also had need to get access to the information. So making them useful for digital research requires operationalizing these existing structures. Many standard NLP and machine learning tools are not built for this. Now these phrase models have several big advantages. First, they're very simple to make and have proven to be very effective. Second, they're very transparent. With these phrase models, we can show how we extracted the structure based on what information, based on what evidence. This is really useful for researchers to establish whether they can trust the results they see and how they were arrived at. Third, it's also a really good mechanism for people who have expertise of the corpus or the domain to incorporate that knowledge in the extraction process. This not only holds for the knowledge they have in advance of the project, but also for the knowledge that they acquired on the way. And finally, these phrase models also allow us to do some error spotting. One example is the meeting dates, where we know that the chronology can be used to identify missing dates or dates that are out of order and therefore probably incorrect. But we can also look at for instance, the resolution opening formulas and see how often they appear. If we see a sudden drop in occurrence, it is likely that something changed at that point in time. And so that might be a signal that a change to the formula or even an entirely new formula is used at that point. And so that's where we need to update our phrase models. Of course, the main disadvantage of these kinds of phrase models is that they are always specific to the corpus and the kinds of information that we want to extract. So there's very little reuse value, but that's not a big disadvantage because they're relatively cheap to make. Next steps. We are working at ways to combine this approach with the more generic techniques. One is to use phrase models in combination with NLP tools, with named entity recognition. Another is to combine phrase models with machine learning. So here we can use the output of the phrase model and fuzzy searching process as input for improving the uh, text recognition, the OCR and the HDR. 
And finally, a step is to improve the fuzzy searcher so that we can make more flexible templates. So that's all I have time for. I thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to answer questions.